Ladies and gentlemen, we have just landed at Porto Airport. Let's go back to Eliakim Mangala at FC Porto. You recall this document by which Porto sold on one third of the player's value to the Doyen Group? Well, the same document also shows another 10%, 650,000 euros, has been granted at no cost to Roby Plus, another company. Does the player know about that deal? We also know that Porto has sold 10% of your transfer rights to a company called Roby Plus. Uh, does that name ring a bell? Have you ever heard of that company? Have you heard of it? No, du tout. No, not at all. Because okay. in FC Porto, we have the rule that FC Porto managers talk about the transfers, not Mangala. I just want to, okay. be, I just want to know if he actually knows uh, what's, what, what's what I happened. understand your point what? of view, but that's not FC Porto's point of view. Well, why it's is it so? Because it's business. That's the secret, mm. okay? That's FC Porto's secret. Okay, Mangala. Okay, Mangala. It's the managers who talk about transfers, not you, okay? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. So we're going to move on to some other subject, okay? So we can't talk about this kind of thing? Finished? Finished. The great thing is that no one knows who is behind Roby Plus. At Porto, at any rate, it's impossible to find out anything else. We have documents, however, that indicate a certain Maurizio Del Menico is the director of Roby Plus. There are no pictures of the man, yet he appears well known in most of the world's company registers, especially in the tax havens. In Liechtenstein, Del Menico is a director of at least two companies. In Ireland, it's seven, in Britain, 14, and in Panama, he seems to be involved in 40 companies. And finally, in Switzerland, Maurizio Del Menico shows up on the board of 335 companies. In all, the businessman is connected to almost 400 companies around the world. We spent months trying to track him down, without luck. Until, one day, a voice at the other end of the phone. Yes, Mr. Delmenico? Yes. The company called Roby Plus, of which you're a director? Oui. Yes. I want to know why this company was involved in the FC Porto transfer. Yes, because I work. Um, I work with other partners. They they know about the players and they deal with that, and I draw up the contract. What partners are you talking about? Luciano Donofrio. Luciano Donofrio. I, I work with him. So, Mr. Donofrio and you handle the transfer of Mangala? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, you and Mr. Donofrio own Roby Plus? Yes, we do business together. Here's the thing Donofrio has been sentenced many times by the French courts. The last occasion was in 2008. In the case of Marseille Football Club's accounts, he received two years with six months to be served behind bars. To help the transfer of one of his players, Luciano Donofrio is suspected of having given then Marseille manager Roland Courbis backhanders. Football's governing body, FIFA, is unequivocal. You need to be squeaky clean to be a football agent with a criminal record untarnished by either financial or violent crime. According to this regulation, Luciano D'Onofrio no longer then has the right to be a player's agent. So here is how it seems to have broken down. Mr. D'Onofrio allegedly set up Elia Kim's Mangala's transfer to FC Porto. But since he was barred from acting as an agent, he couldn't receive any sort of commission. But the solution he found was to negotiate 10% of the financial rights of the player with the club, some 650,000 euros. 
one slice in the Mangala cake, which he successfully camouflaged through a letterbox company in England. That's also what football is about. You can well imagine we have a few questions for Luciano D'Onofrio. He turned down all our interview requests. Our last resort was to stand outside his house in Liège in Belgium. Almost on cue, when we place our cardboard cutout of Mangala, D'Onofrio leaves his house. Bonjour, monsieur. Hello, France 2. Hello, sir. We just want to ask you one question, sir. About the transfer of Mangala. We're just looking for some answers, Mr. D'Orofio. About Mangala's transfer. Please wait. Wait for me. The former football agent seems in great shape. We didn't expect that reaction. It left us breathless. Mr. D'Onofrio explains all on the telephone. I don't want to give an interview, so please leave me alone. All right, do you have any links with the Roby Plus company? No, no, do whatever you're meant to, but just leave me in peace. Now, let's see that again in slow motion. Because a few days later, Mr. D'Onofrio's lawyer contacted us to say it actually wasn't Mr. D'Onofrio we were chasing, but a lookalike hired by his boss to deceive us. In Europe, we detected about 100 top-class players owned at least in part by investment funds. And throughout the world, there are about 1,000. The football agents are everywhere and have seized power. But occasionally clubs do without their services. Without them, transfer deals ought to be far more transparent. In theory. But at Valenciennes, one of the club's players is reportedly at the center of a strange tax scam. Hello, it's France 2 TV. Amazing, here they open up for us. Welcome to Valenciennes' ultra-modern training center. Uh, can you park over there, please? Oh, okay. Oh, this must be the player's parking, eh? This is the journalist's parking space. Valenciennes is one of the historic teams in France's championship. 11th in the league last year. The club is in some financial difficulties and a long way from being able to compete with financial heavyweights PSG and Monaco. In their squad is midfielder Carlos Sanchez, a Colombian international, adored by the fans. If I mention the name Carlos Sanchez, oh, a great player. Actually, I think we can't do without him at Valenciennes at the moment. I was very surprised he might leave for a Chilean club. I hope he still likes it here. He might stay on a bit more. Yes, what happened to Carlos Sanchez last summer is quite interesting. His contract was up with Valenciennes, and despite being wanted by some of Europe's top clubs, he eventually signs up here in Talca, in Chile. Talca has a theater and a great view of the Andes. And, of course, a stadium, home to the famous Talca Rangers, who were 10th in Chile's national championships. Odd choice, really, for a player from a major European league. Yet, almost as soon as he arrived in Talca in August 2012, he turned around and headed back to Valenciennes, where he played for another season. Quite an about face. Especially since Sanchez had agreed to a substantial pay cut. This confidential document reveals he had been earning 75,000 euros gross a month at Valenciennes before he left. On his return, his salary fell to 14,700 euros a month, a drop of some 80%. This is a Colombian soccer player, not the so-called Polish plumber. Why, we want to know, did he accept such a cut in salary? And did he ever really set foot in Chile? We showed him some photographs of Talca. Can I show you three photos? It's like a game, and you tell me if you recognize where it is. What about this? Does this mean anything to you? No. No. What about this team here? Do you know which team this is? It's the photo of the Talca Rangers. 
Est-ce que vous y êtes déjà allé là-bas ou pas Did you really go there or not Yes, I went, but I, I didn't see any of the setup. Pour revenir ici, vous avez fait un effort financier But you returned at a discount. Your wages were cut. Is that true Yes, that's true. Because, oh, but you, from 75,000 to 14,500? Yes. That's enormous. Is it because you're a nice guy and you love the club Yes, I do like the club. It's what made up my mind about coming back. Uh, last question, if I can. Sorry, we, uh, we need to go, they're telling me. Uh, but, uh, no, especially since the topic is not what we agreed on. This is bad. The communication department of Valenciennes is uneasy because, in fact, it's all a scam to try and substantially reduce the club's social charges paid on Sanchez's salary. And here's how we know. To start with, the date in the contract for the loan of the player by the Talca Rangers back to Valenciennes is given as the 21st of August, 2012. It is signed at Valenciennes by Sanchez in person, even though he was meant to have been in Chile at the time and wasn't due back in France for another nine days. In other words, the entire loan operation was organized from Valenciennes, and Sanchez never set foot in Talca. In addition, the Chilean club does not exactly have a good reputation in South America. Last summer, after months of inquiry, the Argentinian tax authorities published a list of 10 clubs in the world. They're suspected of helping European clubs defraud the taxman. On the list are the Talca Rangers. It's the same merry dance. To pay less social charges on a player's salary, a big club has Talca Rangers sign him up and then loan him straight back again. It's an arrangement that seems to suit everyone. In this case, Valenciennes paid out 400,000 euros to Rangers. Some will be paid to Sanchez, a salary. Valenciennes can then pay just a small part of his wages in France and save a huge amount in social security contributions. Given the topic, Jean-Raymond Legrand, the president of the Northern Club, isn't too welcoming. Uh, who are you exactly? France 2, exactly. Stadium 2? No, no. Um, we're interested in the case of Carlos Sanchez and also Valenciennes. And we'd like to ask you two or three questions. On what? Do you have five minutes? Uh, can we sit down? Well, it depends on the questions. I'll answer what I want to answer. He agreed, uh, we understand, to a cutback. Well, listen, that's a secret between the club and himself. Well, more specifically, he earned 75,000 euros gross monthly in 2011. I don't know, it's you saying it, I didn't say it. If you have the figures you claim, that's fine. He earned 75,000 a month gross in the 2011-12 season. Uh, these are, listen, these are highly confidential documents. I think we'll stop there because you shouldn't have those. If the league gave them to you, listen, I'm not going to start calling up the league to... No, that's my job, that's how I got them. No, wait, these are confidential documents that nobody at the club should have or could have, but you, you have the documents. Today we can talk sports, I can talk to you about any sport, I can tell you about the club, I can tell you everything, but if you're doing an inquiry into one of my players, you can do that without me. We're just trying to understand. Listen, I don't get upset. You have documents from the league you should not have. So someone in the league has not done what he should have. And as the director of the league at the next meeting, I'm going to bring this up with the president. So can you tell me about these documents? Listen, you're telling me there is a document or such a document and it's my problem. You know these documents. It's my job to track them down. Let's not lie about it. It's finished. It's finished. Did, uh, we're going to stop right there. Did you arrange the loan with Ra Rangers Talca? Listen, I organized nothing. Mine is a clean club, calm, no problems. I didn't organize anything. Can we sit down? so we can talk about it? I said, I'm stopping, so I'm stopping, that's it. That is not why I came today. I'm not here to investigate a player. But Mr. Legrand, thank you for coming. I know what I've done. Thank you, madam. See you again. Mr. Legrand, we're just trying to get the story straight. By our calculations, Valenciennes saved up to 41% in social contributions on Carlos Sanchez's salary. The club never did answer our questions.